and he will make it apparent what you should do if you'll trust him. So then it comes down, and I've studied this so much over the years because I realize, uh, you know, over the last 20 years, there's been certain points where I recognize that I wasn't trusting the Lord enough. You ever been in a situation where you're like, well, eh, mm, okay, I guess I'm not really trusting the Lord here. But if we're honest, we all come to places in our life where we're like, it's easy to trust over here. I've never had an issue trusting God for money. It's, it's easy. I mean, why? Because I lost everything twice and he rebuilt it. So I, so I know that I just never had any trouble. There's other issues, though, where it's harder for me to trust. And so I realized that. So I studied, like, well, how do I trust in the Lord? Like, well, you just decide to trust the Lord. Okay. But how do I do that? Like, I want to trust the Lord more. How do, well, some of it's just your experience in walking with him. Some of it is just the, the suffering you've been through and how you've watched God redeem it. But there are certain things that you can do. The Bible tells us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. <laughs> we end up blaming God for what people do. I was talking with uh, this past Friday with Canon Andrew White. You might not know who he is, but he's a British man. He's the vicar of Baghdad. In other words, he was from the Church of England, the Anglican Church, he, he, uh, the Anglican Church, rather, and he was sent into Baghdad to try to bring peace and restoration and preach the gospel. There's one church in Baghdad. He was the vicar. He was the pastor. And he said, man, he saw so many salvations there, Muslims getting saved. I'm going to interview him. He's, he's a phenomenal guy. And he said that, you know, it was like they would, they would see Jesus. He's preaching the gospel. And, 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 he, and they would give their lives to Christ. And he'd say, okay, now we're going to disciple you. And, and he's like, well, where would you come from? And he's like, well, I'll just preach the gospel to you. And they would say, all we saw was the man in white. It, they saw Jesus. They didn't see him. And so he told a story. He said, you know, when I was three years old, my dad said, Jesus loves you. Trust in him. Talk to him. He'll talk to you. And he said that he just did that. Time he was three. And then he got filled with the spirit when he was a little bit older. And he said something that just like, eh, eh, it was bound, boggled my mind. He said he never once has had any issue trusting the Lord. No doubt. No fear. No unbelief. And I believed him. Well, you'd have to have total trust to go in the middle of Baghdad and the wartime and pastor a church when there's bombs going off everywhere. And so it's possible. It's possible to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, or God wouldn't tell us to do it. So we need to renew our mind that God is trustworthy. Psalm 37, 5 through 6. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the new day. It's a noon day. You have to read scriptures about how God is trusted and renew your mind to that reality. Right? Psalm 9, verse 10. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. So when you know his name, when you know him, when you really I mean, how do you get to trust people in real, like 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 flesh and blood people? How do you get to trust people? How did you begin to trust John? You didn't, when the first time you saw him, you didn't trust him no more than the man on the moon, right? As nice and handsome as he is, you're like, you had to get to know him, right? You had to get to know him. You didn't trust her either. I know you didn't trust her either. You had to get to know her. You have to get to know people. When you get to know them and you see how they respond under pressure and trials, then you begin to trust them. But see, God is steady in the middle of a trial. He's not like, ah, he's not biting his fingernails. What am I going to do? Psalm 28, 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. So you got to renew your mind. Those are just 